sense. Um, let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we want to thank you that you are God of our lives. And today, Lord, we bring you all our worship. Take our hearts, our lives, and let it be consecrated, Lord, only to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to our verse of consideration. Um, the book of Nahum. Nahum chapter 1. And we'll read from verse 1 down to verse 7. It says, The burden against Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry, and dries up all the rivers. Bashan and Carmel wither, and the flower of Lebanon wilts. The mountains quake before him, the hills melt, and the earth heaves at his presence. Yes, the world and all who dwell in it. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can endure the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. Verse 7 The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Now, I have read the following quotes on Pinterest and on Facebook. It says, The human brain is awesome. It functions 24 hours a day from the day we are born and only stops when we write an exam or fall in love. Another one says, I open a text mentally to respond and then actually forget to respond. And this person gave advice on Facebook, he says, I changed my password to incorrect. So whenever I forget what it is, the computer will say, password is incorrect. And the last one, it says, as you get older, three things happen. First, your memory goes, and I can't remember the other two. Forgetting is something we do very easily as humans. I know I always tell my wife that, I don't forget, I just fail to remember. And these are all funny and we can wink at times at someone's forgetfulness. But sometimes it's more difficult to forgive when the person forgets a major event. For instance, if a husband forgets the anniversary or a child's birthday. But because forgetting is part of human nature, we tend to wink easily at it. But today I want us to look at a more serious issue on forgetting. The title of the sermon is The Cure for Forgetting. Now when you read the introduction of one name, it says the burden against Nineveh. Now the, Greek, the Hebrew word for burden is masa. But I like the Septuagint equivalent which says Lima. Now Lima is the same word used for forgetfulness. Webster says forgetfulness is normally associated with age and it goes further to say that it is characterized by negligent failure to remember. Now when we look at the history of Nahum, Nineveh of Nineveh, Nineveh heard the prophet Jonah and the book of Jonah tells us that when Jonah preached to Nineveh Everyone repented, even the animals. But 100 years later, in 660 BC, Jonah preached in 760 BC, came, Nahum came 660 BC. The Nineveh that Jonah left was not the same Nineveh that Nahum speaks to. This Nineveh went into a spiritual forgetfulness. Now, why are we 
standing still on this forgetfulness because forgetfulness leads to unbelief and unbelief leads to rebellion we find so many places in scripture where we see how people forget and the moment they forget it goes over into their unbelief and then they rebel against God the book of Exodus is full of it the book of Judges has a monotonous line that runs straight, straight through Judges that the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God now Webster says that rebellion can be defined as opposition to one in authority or dominance it even goes so far as to say it is armed opposition against one in authority or dominance now in the book of Jonah Nineveh receives grace and mercy from God but in the book of, of Nahum Nineveh now receive judgment because they return to the wicked ways meaning they forgot what God has done and in forgetting they went back they turned themselves against the God who called them to repentance now rebelling against God we don't have to take up arms to rebel against God to show our opposition against his authority you can just um, withhold your tithes and offerings you are not rebelling against the church you are rebelling against God you can just sleep or have sex with your girlfriend or boyfriend before you get married that is rebelling against God you can spread the the, the rumor the gossip about someone knowing it is not true tarnishing their reputation that is rebelling against God doing your own things on the Lord's Sabbath day that is rebelling against God now God is very high on remembering there's a song that tells us count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done Ellen White writes in manuscripts 118-1905 today Christ is offering grace to them if they will cooperate with him to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling lest they shall lose the opportunities granted them they are ever to remember that it is God which worketh in them both to will and to do his good pleasure reason conscience memory must be brought under the control of Jesus Christ now let's look at the cure for forgetfulness verse 3 says the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked now the first point here is we need to remember what God has done and the remembering of what God has done that is our personal testimony none of us had a testimony they were to testify of this God who was slow to anger and great in power when Jonah came to preach because they had physical evidence that God is slow to anger but instead of of sharing with those around them what God has done for them historian says that they fortified their city they built walls as high as a hundred feet and as it was broad enough for three chariots to run next to each other around this wall so instead of proclaiming they fortified and became an exclusive club and we may say yeah but that is is none of us. we will never do that and my question is really if I may ask you whom did you tell about the love of Jesus this week with whom did you share God's amazing grace during this week and you may say yeah but Zane it is COVID-19 we are under lockdown we can't go anywhere my question again is seeing that we can't go out does your family know about Jesus does your neighbors your children know about Jesus or have you also fortified yourself you see beloved we have become so 
so boxed in terms of doing evangelism that we have assigned it to the PM department, handing out tracts, giving DVDs, um, doing um, health seminars, telling people how they can pro prolong their lives. But we know that people aren't interested anymore in what we know. The world is full of what, what to know. They want to know who do you know and why does he matter to you. Sometimes we, have, we know so much, but yet so little about who we should know. You see, all of us have a story to tell. Lamentations, I, I think it's Lamentations 3.23 that says, His mercies are new every morning. Meaning, God gives us something to share on a daily basis. We don't have to wait for big events to happen to share the goodness of God. You can share what God is doing for you today. The second one, verse 4, He rebukes the sea and makes it dry, and dries up all the rivers. So, firstly, they have a testimony of who God is. Secondly, God gives them a faith flashback. God takes them back to, to Egypt, the Exodus. He gives them something to hold on to when there is really nothing else to hold on to. Um, to illustrate this point, when the class of 1992 started leaving Old Trafford, the likes of David Beckham, Gary Neville, Yapstam, um, and, 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 and people were starting to say that this United team is a useless team. And I remember the one game we were waiting to play was the game against Arsenal. Now my um, supervisor then in Cape Town, he was a staunch Arsenal supporter. And I remember the weeks leading up to the game, he would taunt and bantering and, 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 and he would tell us how useless our team is. How Robin Van Persie will score five goals because remember, the previous season, Robin Van Persie was the golden boot winner for, for the, the, the Premier League. And he would tell us how they will beat us. How useless this team is. And I remember the week before the game, feeling discouraged because I knew we were an inexperienced team compared to Arsene Wenger's experienced Arsenal team. And I remember the, the um, leading up to the game, I went on to YouTube and I checked all the highlights of Manchester United versus Arsenal. And there I saw how David Beckham would curl the ball into the Arsenal net, scoring winners. Paul Scholes with his Cannon foot. Ryan Giggs would forget Ryan Giggs 1999 FA Cup semi final. How he ran from his own half and scored the winner for, for, for United in the FA Cup um, semi final. And you know, while I was watching these highlights, I grew in confidence. Not confidence in the players because I knew we don't have the players. But we still had the same coach. And I knew the coach of 1999 is the same coach of 2012. So when we watched the game on Sunday, I wasn't scared because my confidence was in the ability of our coach. And guess what? Arsenal beat, United beat Arsenal 8-2. Beloved, may I say to you today that we have the same coach that Moses had when the Red Sea was parting. We have the same coach that Joshua had when the sun stood still. We have the same coach that David had when Goliath fell. We have no reason to fear because our coach is still the same. See, if you are, if you have an empty cupboard, go onto God's YouTube channel and go look for manna raining from heaven. If there's sickness in the family, go on to YouTube and see Lazarus raising from the dead. If you are feeling alone and feel like, you feel like no one cares, go to Proverbs where Solomon says there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. 
We have no reason to be faithless or fearful because the same coach that parted the Red Sea is still the same coach that is with us today. I love what Ellen White says in Life Sketches, page 196. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and His teachings in our past history. Child of God, you have nothing to fear. I would declare to you today that faith as an acronym, though it stands in Hebrews 11, but faith's acronym says fears are insignificant to Him. Not insignificant that they don't matter, but your fears are so much smaller than your God. Last point. God's ultimate cure for forgetfulness. Verse 7. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And He knows those who trust in Him. Now I was very selfish when it came to this verse. Because this is my favorite verse in the Bible. This verse kept me at a time when my wife was going through an uncertain time or period in her pregnancy. Now it says that God knows those who trust in Him. And I would like to say that this is what I would call an assurance text. The Lord is good. Romans 2 verse 4 says, The purpose of God's goodness is to lead us to repentance. What is God's goodness? I want us to turn to the book of Isaiah. We are still talking about God's cure for forgetting. Isaiah 49 verse 15 and 16. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of a womb? Surely they may forget. Yet I will not forget you. Verse 16. See, as if God is inviting us. Look. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. You see, though we forget, God cannot forget. I know we as Adventists, we don't like tattoos. But God says, I have a tattoo with your name on it. And it wasn't inscribed with ink, but with nails and a hammer. Fixed forever. Let me submit to you today that the goodness of God is beautifully stated in the book of Desire of Ages, page 25. Christ was treated as we deserve, that we may be treated as He deserves. He was condemned for our sins in which He had no share, that we might be justified by His righteousness in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which was His. By His stripes we are healed. And that, beloved, is the goodness of God. He knows us through what He has done for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, the cross of Christ was an embarrassment to the Jews, ridiculous to the Greeks, but there was no other way for our salvation. And then the Hebrew word there for know is yada. Um, yada is the same word the Bible uses when it says, Adam yada his wife and they conceived Cain. So this speaks of there's an intimacy that God has with those who trust Him. You see, He loves us all. But those who trust Him, God has an intimacy with them. And we all know, married people, when there's intimacy, life grows. And what did Jesus say in John 10? I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So for us to have intimacy with God, intimacy doesn't just happen on a on a Sabbath at 11 o'clock. It's no wonder we, we fight as a church to have the doors of the church open because we think intimacy only happens during divine service. But true intimacy with God happens every single day of our lives. And how do we have intimacy? 
by studying His Word, spending time in prayer, witnessing, remembering what God has done for us. Today, God invites all of us to intimacy with Him. You see, once you have that intimacy with God, you cannot forget Him. It's impossible to forget about God. And God says, I have put everything in place through my goodness, so you don't have to forget me. Just ponder. Think of what I have done for you on the cross of Calvary. And you will remember how much I loved you. And how much I still love you. Oh, beloved, I'm inviting us all today to God's cure for our forgetfulness. Testimony. Sharing with people what God has done. Then, remembering also what He has done. Go back into your faith closet and see where God has brought you from. And lastly, having intimacy with God. Constantly thinking of the great price he paid, he paid for our salvation. I want to pray for us that we may have this intimacy with God. That we may know that the Lord indeed is good. And through his goodness, he gave his life for us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are thankful for what you have done for us. And today, Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. We know that once we, if we surrender, rebellion can't stand in the face of surrender. Oh Lord, help us that we may share our testimony with people. Help us to remember what you have done for us. Let us go back into our faith closets when we have nothing to hold on to because we know that God is still in the business of saving and providing for us. Oh Lord, and help us that we may contemplate on your goodness of what you have done for us. Help us to have that intimacy with you, Lord. Impregnate us with life and life abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.